Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. After a video like that, I feel as though I should be a rock star. Sorry to disappoint you, I'm not. <laughs> but welcome to the Enterprise Europe Network annual conference. It is amazing to see so many people here. We have something like 800 delegates registered for this event. I'm not sure that everybody's in this room, but it is obviously a very big event. My name is Cathy Smith. I am, the technical term is Master of Ceremonies, but I met some of you last year at the Brussels conference, so I do know one or two of you at least. It's great to be in Bratislava in the refinery gallery, and you understand from the name that in fact this used to be a, an oil refinery complex, part of it. And so there's a real sort of sense of industrial history in this building, which is fantastic and really great for the theme of the conference. And it's an important Slovak EU presidency event, of course. They host the Slovak Ministry of Economy, the European Commission, and also the Executive Agency uh, for SMEs. So those are your hosts today. It is, of course, an opportunity for networking because that's the whole point. That's the big word, isn't it? Networking. Now, you've all got your badges. Some of you saw these badges last year from a company called Blendology. You've seen how they work. It's a bit like an electronic kiss. It's just like a real kiss, you see. The lights go on the moment you have, a, you have contact. But that means that the details from each of the badges have exchanged, and all the contact details will be sent to you by the Blendology company on their website almost, well, over the next day or so. So you can uh, get as many details of make as many contacts as you, as you can. And far as the badges are concerned, please don't leave the conference with them. Either hand them in this evening if you're leaving or tomorrow when you leave um, and uh, you will be sent all the contacts, as I say. You will see we have cameras around the place and we are web streaming. So something like 4,000 staff of the network around Europe. I don't suppose they're all watching, but anyway, hello to you from Bratislava. And also don't forget that, that the final session tomorrow afternoon will also be web streamed at about 3.30 in the afternoon. So please do join us on the web stream for that. We're Twittering, of course. The EASME team are giving, doing live tweets throughout, and we want you to join in with tweeting. Hashtag EEN16. EEN16. It's a busy agenda. I don't think anyone's ever been to a conference where you didn't say it was a busy agenda, but it really is. Um, we've obviously got the plenary sessions, but there are more than 20 parallel sessions. We've got the matchmaking activities, which I know everybody really likes. It's a very useful way to make contact with people, to meet people, to do business with people. You've seen the networking area outside. The, it's the Stefan Banish room, and there are information booths. Uh, all the rooms you've probably noticed have got posters outside, which are names of Slovak entrepreneurs um, through the ages, I mean, not just current day ones. So that's all, all very interesting to have a look at. Now, this is an important time for the network, really, because it's evolving and changing in a way to reflect the way that the SME landscape itself is evolving and changing, and the network is developing a new vision. And it's something that's going to be talked about a lot over the next couple of days. The proposal is for the network to really target and to better target high growth potential SMEs. But all this has got to be talked through, this vision, um, and of course it will be part of the workshops. So the workshops on startups and scale-ups, on innovation, regional cooperation, the single market strategy and internationalization. And in fact, this afternoon there's a dedicated session on the future direction of the network. Now, in fact, this is, we've got limited capacity in that session because it will be a popular session. There are only 120 seats and there are more than that of you out there. So we could ask you if just one person from your consortium goes to that meeting, then it, it gives a chance for everybody to take part in that um, important meeting. And of course, in the closing plenary session tomorrow, there will be sort of pulling of the threads together, if you like, trying to wrap everything up into a roadmap for the future for the vision of the network. Before all that, this afternoon, though, we're going to be honoring um, some inspiring and successful entrepreneurs in the Enterprise Europe Awards. And um, 
so that's all to come. And obviously, looking at the sort of the, the success stories that have been brought about with the help of the partners from the network. But before that, that's enough from me. Um, I'd like to hand you over to your real hosts. And first of all, we're delighted to have with us the Minister of Economy of the Slovak Republic, Mr. Peter Žiga. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. It is my great honor and pleasure to welcome you here in Bratislava, the capital city of Slovak Republic, and the host of uh, this significant event, the Enterprise Europe Network Annual Conference. This is the ninth event this year with particip participation of 700 uh, 95 delegates from 50 countries, which highlights its importance. Preparation for this event were a big challenge for us, as business environment is imp an important part of the agenda of the Ministry of Economy of the Slovak Republic. It was a great experience for all of us uh, to be equal partner of European Commission in organizing such a significant event and, uh, and at the same time to assist in the fulfillment of its main goals, which are to create a platform to discuss uh, the development of small and medium enterprises, the entrepreneurship support, innovation and research, but also the strategic direction of the network in the years 2017-2018. At the same time, the conference serves as a platform to introduce potential of Slovak small and medium enterprises and to prevent, present innovative ideas that were awarded here in Slovakia as well as abroad. Let me wish you a success, successful conference, fruitful discussion, a pleasant experience from visit and stay in Slovakia. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much indeed, Minister. And now our second host is Christian Schreiber, who is Director for SME Policy and Cosme, DG Grow at the European Commission. Ms. Schreiber. Dear Minister Giga, dear Enterprise Europe Network members, it's a great pleasure for me to be here in Bratislava today, the city I spent so much time in between 1999 and 2004 doing the accession negotiations with Slovakia. In this splendid venue here, a shining symbol of innovation, but also of business heritage. And I would like to start off by thanking you, the Minister Giga, for hosting our conference, and also the staff of the Ministry for Economics, as well as all the colleagues from EASMA and my own staff, for the hard work that has been put into the organization of this event. Uh, it's of great importance for me and the Commission as a whole to be present at this major event in your annual calendar, and also at this crucial moment in the life of the Enterprise Europe Network. The first contractual period is drawing to a close, and a new period lies ahead, offering new opportunities and, of course, also new challenges. The forthcoming period will be demanding for SMEs. Due to the rapid pace of innovation and change in the business world, continuing economic uncertainty, and also due to the geopolitical developments that may affect markets, as well as create new opportunities. SMEs strongly need your help to innovate, to find the right partners, and to do business abroad. From our side, we're working on a number of new EU policy initiatives that will directly impact SMEs and will also directly impact your services. I'll come back to this later. We need to be forward-looking. We are moving into a phase where we will need to start thinking ahead to prepare for the future. I'm therefore keenly interested and in make a strong call and support for the ongoing work to define the future vision for the Enterprise Europe Network. And I would like to thank those of you 
who, who have already started to stimulate the discussion, in particular in the Steering and Advisory Group Bureau. First, the goal of delivering more impact is crucial. Some new generation EN services are already setting in motion and a real shift towards higher impact services for SMEs with higher potential. On the other hand, we do recognize the interest that many of you have in targeting some services to a wider audience, but not necessarily all SMEs. It's extremely important to get the right balance for this future vision. How wide and how deep should we go with network services? And we need to take into account, of course, the very diverse conditions you are faced with. So you are really warmly invited to contribute with ideas, suggestions during the debate today, and of course, also beyond. Other key words for the future are, of course, excellence and ambition. The awards presented during this annual conference showcase your recent achievement. And the evaluation for the period up to 2014 of the network demonstrated your efficiency and professionalism and your impact on the growth of your SME clients. Please keep up the good work, but we need to go further. And most of all, I think we also need to make the work even more visible. Moving to current priorities, I would like to highlight the strong link between the EN's activities and many of the policy priorities on the Commission's agenda. Competitiveness and innovation will continue to be key priorities over the forthcoming years. It's very important to reinforce the very particular and unique role you play in this area. Um, the State of the Union speech made by President Juncker also mentions the importance of a variety of issues, access to finance, stimulating investment, and international trade. On that same day, the Commission also announced important proposals to extend and reinforce the EFSI, the European Fund for Strategic Investments. And against this background, it is extremely important and the EU has confirmed its overall efforts to give more impetus to Europe. And for us in the EU institutions, it's a unique opportunity to make sure that our policies are more aligned with requirements at grassroots level. We shall therefore continue to build on the opportunities for you to demonstrate that Europe works through the valuable services that you provide to SMEs at local level and through the feedback on EU policies you can ensure. One flagship initiative that we are working on is a new initiative on startups and scale-ups, which is planned for adoption in the coming days, in principle for the 22nd of November. For the network, important for you to know, we plan to introduce the role of scale-up advisors for young innovative companies wishing to scale their activities outside their home country. Many of you have certainly taken part in the public consultation which anticipated this initiative and which anticipated new services. And in particular, I would like to mention the strong emphasis on mapping the ecosystem, on cooperating with regional stakeholders, and targeting your services towards a specific audience of SMEs with high potential for innovation and for scaling up at European level. Please do take advantage of this conference and all the related workshops tomorrow to exchange views on how you can tailor your scale-up services and help scale-ups address the challenges they are faced with in the most effective way. In addition, I would also like to mention that we intend to mobilize a budget of 2 million euro for a pilot project addressed to the network to support businesses and link up with stakeholders involved in the collaborative economy. Of course, you may say that these additional resources for this task are limited, but this makes it all the more important to target these valuable services to businesses that can achieve most impact. And showcasing good practice will be important for gaining extra leverage, just as everywhere else. Another important development uh, that I would like to briefly mention, and which many of you have already uh, talked about, is the European Innovation Council, which is still in the early stages of preparation. We know that many of you are concerned about the possible impact that the European Innovation Council could have on the positioning and activities of the Enterprise Europe Network. And my services will indeed ensure the right role for the Enterprise Europe Network, but we do need input from you. Uh, input with your comments highlighting your expertise, your experience and strengths, and how you can contribute to this process. And completing our work on the vision for the Enterprise New Europe Network 
will also put us in a more solid position in the context of future developments on this European Innovation Council. Let me also briefly mention a few other areas of particular policy relevance. Concerning innovation services, it is important for you to stay at the forefront. During this event, there will be opportunities for you to find out about support tools that can help you to upgrade your services. Access to finance is also a key activity area for you, and the dedicated workshop will, I hope, put you in the best condition to ensure your role. Concerning the investment plan and the FC, the European Fund for Strategic Investments, you can play an important role by serving as a filter, informing and advising those FMEs who have the right characteristics for benefiting from this instrument. Another important initiative worth mentioning in this context is the future pan-European venture capital fund of funds, which should enable additional investments into venture capital of around 1.6 billion to be made. Again, this is not relevant for everyone, but it can be highly relevant for scale-ups. The annual guidance note 2017 will soon be ready, and it will reflect these new policy initiatives I have just mentioned. As was the case last year, the next annual guidance note will be closely aligned with key service areas of the network, such as innovation, the single market, access to finance, and internationalization. Expect an increased emphasis on opportunities for the EN to create impact for SMEs and pass on European good practices to the regions, and expect less emphasis on informing SMEs and or promoting new EU initiatives. Um, finally, two other opportunities worth mentioning. A pilot project addressed to the network for female participation in the Horizon 2020 SME instrument. Your role would be to raise awareness amongst women about the potential of the SME instrument and guide them for successfully applying through events and other services. This was a request from the European Parliament which we are implementing through this project. And also another forthcoming development with Erasmus for Young Entrepreneurs, you know, the very successful program. We have received a budget of 750,000 euro for an EP pilot project called Erasmus for Young Entrepreneurs Global in order to extend the Erasmus for Young Entrepreneurs matching possibilities in selected third countries. We still have to select them, but there's clearly strong interest both from the US and from Israel, which both have a thriving startup community. So in order to conclude, I would like to highlight again the four key priorities for the Enterprise Europe Network from our perspective. Completing the work on shaping our future vision, putting in place new scale-up services in close cooperation with other regional stakeholders, achieving a strong position for your innovation services in the context of developments on the future European Innovation Council, and finally, working together to further enhance the impact and the visibility of the network. Last but not least, one very important area which definitely gives the Enterprise Europe Network a competitive edge, and that is a very strong human dimension of the network. The solid working contacts that you have forged with colleagues all over Europe over the years. Please take maximum advantage of this event to network, to meet new colleagues, and to find out about good practices that you can implement back home. I wish you every success with this event, and I'm of course available during these two days uh, for any uh, feedback you may wish to give me or for any further discussions. So looking forward uh, to a continued good cooperation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Let me take that. Ms. Schreiber, do you, would you stay with us on the stage as you're going to be part of our, our judging panel? And we do understand that the minister has to leave. We're, we're very grateful for the time. We, we, we know that you've uh, got to come away from a very busy time. So thank you very much indeed for being with us. So now, a very special moment. Time to celebrate success with the... Enterprise Europe Network Awards. Fifth edition of the awards, and it's a time really to honor some inspiring entrepreneurs, people who have 
I suppose, followed their dreams, been prepared to take risks, but have been given a lot of support by the network along the way. And so we want to celebrate success of the network and of the entrepreneurs. Before we get move on to that, I want to uh, tell you a little bit more about the judging panel. There were five judges. Now, Christine Schreiber, you have met, uh, Director for SME Policy and the Cosme Programme. The second judge is Marco Malacani, head of department of EASME, that's the European Agency for SMEs. Would you like to join us on stage? Good afternoon to you. Good to see you. Our third judge who we were hoping to have with us is uh, Yori Vasulik, who is the co-founder and CEO of Aeromobile, which is a, a Slovak company uh, commercializing a flying car. Unfortunately, uh, Mr. Vasilik is ill today, but he is being replaced by one of his colleagues, Stefan Vados, who's a board member of Aeromobile, and he's going to pass on all the comments that were made from the judge. Thank you very much indeed. And also, we'll hear more about the company Aeromobile. Now, the two other judges were Francesco Guerrero, who is associate editor and chief financial correspondent of Politico EU edition, a journalist, Unfortunately, he couldn't be with us today. And the fifth judge is Kaya Kallas, who is an Estonian Euro MP. She is not here, but she will be joining us by video link from Brussels a little later on. So uh, all is not lost. She will be with us in one form or another. So let me talk to our judges. Um, Christine Schreiber, could I ask you, first of all, why it is so important for the European Commission to sort of celebrate success in this way with these awards? Well, I think um, you need to put the microphone very close. The simple fact of having launched the, Europe, the Enterprise Europe Network in 2008 is already, I mean, a major achievement because of its huge scope, uh, of its huge activities in the context of the of the single market, and this opportunity given to companies to exploit possibilities uh, cross border. But of course, I mean, the Enterprise Europe Network ultimately is there to serve SMEs. And that's why we think it's extremely important that we show basically which are the SMEs who were clever enough to make good use of the services offered uh, to translate this into, into practical reality. And uh, that's why I'm extremely uh, happy that we have this award ceremony uh, today. And um, so I, I think this is also a very good opportunity to increase the visibility, which I just mentioned in my opening remarks, and to really showcase what the EN is for. Absolutely. And Marco Malikani, I mean, the network has changed and evolved over the years. So what's different about the sort of nominees that we're seeing today? What, what has changed there? Uh, thank you, Cathy. I think that for me, the key word is innovation. I think that innovation is more present uh, this year than ever before. And this can be seen in the list of uh, nominees. Half of them are beneficiaries of the SME instrument. It can be seen in the choice of topics that you've mentioned. It can be seen also in the policy making of the Commission, which is taking a slightly new direction. Um, I think that that shows um, how the, uh, the network as a whole is gradually changing its direction. But of course, there are also welcome similarities with respect to the past. And I would say that the main similarity is the great enthusiasm of people. That's, that's a constant. And the other similarity is the great diversity and variety of themes uh, that the uh, nominees and their associate members are showing in their, in their activities. Thank you. Um, now, Stefan Vados, luckily, we weren't going to ask anyway, uh, Jure Vasilik, we weren't going to ask him about his vote, his judging at this point. We were going to ask about Aeromobile anyway, and so you're in a good position to tell us about that. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about this flying car concept and, and how it's developed? Yeah, it's uh, very great to be uh, currently in this company because it's already a European company. We work uh, with more than eight nationalities at the company at present, and we set out to change the world uh, of personal transportation. So we are developing uh, a solution that efficiently combines the very best features of uh, road and air travel, as you can see right now, in a single vehicle, the sophisticated uh, flying car. Some experts call it also roadable aircraft or advanced flying automobile, but uh, it can uh, help us to overcome some of the issues which we have in medium distance travel or traffic congestions and delays 
in large metropolitan areas. And uh, of course, it can help us to travel faster where there is no adequate road infrastructure. So this is Aeromobile. It's amazing. I was going <laughs> to... I, I noticed that one of the entrepreneurs that's mentioned in w one of the panels outside one of the rooms is uh, a monk Cyprian, a monk from the 1700s who it says supposedly designed a flying machine. I was wondering whether whether Yuri Vasilik had been inspired by him. Yeah, the first inspiration comes from Stefan Klein, who is uh, another partner in the company, and he is also inventor of uh, the first aeromobile, which uh, started. Uh, to build in 2013. It was Aeromobile 2.5, and the vehicle you can see right now, it's Aeromobile 3.0. And in the close future, you will see the next prototype we want to um, present to, to the public uh, early next year. Wonderful. And it's all started off as a, a small company, like so many, so many ideas. Thank you all very much. Well, of course, we're going to hear more from you. Um, we're now going to get on to the, to the award ceremony. We have three categories of award winners. Category A, first of all, is new partnerships. And this is, what we mean by this is the best outcome for an SME in accessing new markets through partnership. And Marco Malacani is going to announce the nominees and the award winners for this category. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is a pleasure to introduce this category. I think that uh, new partnership and partnership services is the bread and butter of, uh, the, end of the network, as you know. Uh, it is the way in which the network can demonstrate its great skill and capacity to unlock the potential of different companies across Europe working together. Um, I think that uh, that is certainly one way of helping companies because it shows, it highlights the will of many entrepreneurs to move across borders, to expand their horizons. So there are great stories, great aspirations that, have, that are being developed by the, with that method. And um, certainly internationalization is one of the fastest ways to create growth. Statistics are very clear on that. Companies that wish to expand their objectives across countries uh, in an international way normally grow much faster than others. So we're very glad to see this feature uh, embodied in this category. Um, the, uh, the category itself has three nominees, and it is my pleasure to introduce the three nominees. And I think that there is a video that will now show the three nominees. Medins is a Swedish company with a team of experts within water ecology. In 2014, we decided to expand our business into marine biology. We therefore contacted the Enterprise Europe network to find a partner in the marine side. We turned to our colleagues within the network in the UK. The company that we identified, Sea Star Survey, they were really a perfect match and could complement each other's competences. We have been able to teach Seastar Survey our skills within freshwater ecology and they have been able to share their skills within marine science with us. And thanks to this partnership, we are now working in both the marine and the freshwater environment. There are still great discoveries to do in water and it's very exciting to be a part of that process. with actually a very famous hockey player, Martin Samuelson. We built a machine, Tryon, a modular triathlon room indoor in 16 square meter. 
when we needed a validation of the training, we decided to contact the Enterprise Europe network to help us. Thanks to my knowledge about local innovation ecosystem, I was aware that Paolo Brusaghini at the University of Verona was studying new training methodologies for astronauts, but also for normal athletes. With the training performed on the Tryon device, it's possible to increase muscle mass, decrease body fat, and increase aerobic performance and anaerobic performance. After all this research, we are ready to launch the Trio machine in the market in 2017. Aquabion is an alternative water treatment system which bind the minerals in the water and will therefore treat the water without chemicals or salt. At the end of 2014, I contacted uh, Enterprise Europe Network. I was looking for international distributors to market our product. Thanks to the database of the Enterprise Europe Network, we managed to connect through the Austrian network partners with the company Rabmer Green Tech. Aquabion brings a big benefit to our company because it fits perfectly to our existing product portfolio for water treatment and environmental products. Sabrina did a very good job bringing us together. We have employed uh, new people, uh, our turnover has gone up and we have developed new markets. So we have seen three companies that are very much internationally oriented and I'm very confident that we'll all have a bright future in front of them. And the winner for the Enterprise Euro Award 2016 in the category New Partnership is Aquabion and Rabna Greentech. Supported by, supported by Zenit GmbH and Business Upper Austria. We haven't even heard everybody, well, we saw you in Mark, Mark Fletner from Aquabion, Ulrika Rabner Koller from Rabner Green Tech. We didn't see you in the film, I don't think. Uh, but you, no. <laughs> but you, you sold uh, the water treatment system. Um, and what difference has this partnership made to your company? Yes, yeah, so actually, I think we are a perfect match. So we found each other through the EAM network. And Mark is producing a very innovative product. And we have a very good sales network. And uh, for us, our customers are used that we always give the best solution to them. And so we were looking for um, new innovative and, for, uh, and um, very good technology to provide. And uh, we made it. And our customers are very satisfied. And we have now increased the turnover, both of us. And so just great. What Thanks. more could you? What, sorry. Thanks for the award. What more could you want? So, let me, can I just uh, get in the middle here, sorry Mark, and um, ask the partners. So we saw you in the film as well, Sabrina Woodrick from uh, Zenit. So what did you learn from this partnership? Well, we learned that you can really do good business with resource efficiency. Oh, and, for, and the second partner, that, you see, that was, that's what I like, somebody who's brief and to the point. <laughs> Uh, Clemens Korschmig, from Project Manager for Business Upper Austria. So what would you say you learned from the partnership? 
Well, uh, I learned that it's important to find really ambitious companies, and uh, it takes a good follow-up work. Thank you, you see, that's it. That's what I like. Just know what they want to say and say it quickly. Well, thank you all very, very much indeed. And congratulations to our first winners. Thank you. I haven't asked you, Marco. Yes. Why did you choose why? them? Why? You've gone before you've even heard why, why you, you considered this. It's a perfect combination between sustainability and innovation. It shows that attention to the environment and profit making and economic success can go hand in hand if innovation helps them. I think that it shows also the, the scope of this uh, application. This is a patented technology that helps the, an environmental friendly treatment of water that is applicable in the private and in the public sector. And the international scope is not just Austria and Germany. We have here very, two very experienced uh, partners of the network, but there are now already market applications from other, seven other countries. So it's a huge application. And we should not forget that water is the key to the future. So there are plenty of other applications in other markets. Personally, I can only think of Africa, for instance. It's a huge market. So good work. Well done. Well, thank you very much, Dee. Thank, thank you. you. So, second category, this is new directions. And what we mean by this is the best example of positive results for SMEs who have successfully benefited from network advisory services. And uh, this is going to be presented, it would have been by Yuri Vasilik, but uh, now Stefan Vadots is going to come into play here. Thank you very much indeed, Stefan. Thank you. We think that uh, small and medium businesses are the cornerstone of every economy. They create lively ecosystem and open new opportunities for cooperation. Thanks to innovative startups and SMEs, we advance not only economy, but overall knowledge of the human society. I would like to present the three nominations of the 2016 Earth Enterprise Europe Network Awards for category B. Water is the only medium on Earth that helps enable us to recreate the three-dimensional effect of space. I think at first when you say that you want to train astronauts, the, the first thing people don't think about is not a pool, but actually it's the most useful feature. So Blue Abyss will be 50 metres long by 40 metres wide with a maximum depth of 50 metres and as such will be the largest pool of its kind by volume in the world. When I met John, the project was fantastic, however I identified that there were elements that were missing. Some of the solutions I managed to find were to ensure that John had protected his intellectual property and I was able to get a report on STEM science projects. Thanks to the Enterprise Europe network, we now have a much more investment ready uh, proposition. We've been very fortunate in getting international support from the European Space Agency and even NASA and it's given me a personal sense of achievement. an essential ingredient uh, for good soils. For example, in the Mediterranean, in the Middle East, in Africa, they are desert soils. And Novihum is a product that can enhance these soils and make them into fertile land. We had an investor, but we needed to find additional funding and the right location for a pilot plant. And that's why we contacted Enterprise Europe Network the most important point was the funding advice. We supported Novihome by applying for the so-called SME instrument, that is a European instrument. It was a tremendous success and motivation for us to get funding from the Horizon 2020 program. And this is really what is helping us now really to scale up the product to an industrial size.
Babok Engineering is a national leader in hazardous waste management in Bulgaria and it also provides solutions for low and intermediate level radioactive waste. Due to economical, political and environmental legislation changes, a lot of chemicals are not used and produced anymore. And these wastes are called historical waste. That's what Balbok is targeting. We've contacted uh, Enterprise Europe Network because we wanted to build a laboratory in our premises and expand our services. We provide professional advice on uh, how to go through the whole application process. The results are the two laboratories that are in place. They are fully equipped and operational and they have now the perspective to expand across the Balkan region. Now we can advance our mission to protect the environment and we can continue with scientific research and development of new technologies to treat hazardous waste. And the and the winner in this category is Novihum Technologies GmbH with the support of Zenit GmbH. Congratulations, gentlemen. Let me come in and uh, ha have a little chat to you. So, this is Peter Langer, who you saw in the video from Nomihum. Um, what did the SME instrument funding actually do specifically for your company? The SME instrument funding has certainly helped us to provide the financial means to uh, build and uh, operate our pilot plant together with funding, with venture capital from our investors, of course. But it was uh, very important for us to get this additional um, uh, funding in order to build our pilot plant to hire the personnel that we need uh, to operate the plant and also to hire and to provide the engineering resources needed to scale up the plant because the next step will have to be a production size plant. And I can say today that the plant, the pilot plant is operational. We've already produced more than 100 tons of the material since August. So this has been a very successful startup and we will go into the scale up process over the next few months. And I thank you very much for this award. Thank you very much. And Bernd Mayer from Zenit, why is it important for you to help innovative, um, high potential SMEs, I suppose, like Noviham, um, with the SME instrument funding? It makes our work visible and because the results are quite obvious. The SME gets the funding and gets the possibility to demonstrate its business idea. And the network could promote this idea. Excellent, thank you very much indeed. Now I know, Stefan, you were not the judge, but I know that your colleague has actually sent his thoughts on why this company was considered to be wor a worthy winner. So can you tell us um, what he said? Yeah, as being as a messenger of uh, Juraj Vaculik, uh, I have uh, a message from him. As the global population grows, we must seek innovative solutions to feed the world preserving soil quality, protecting it against the erosion, and enabling the use of some desert areas is admirable mission. Novihum Technologies attracted both public and private funding and has clear market potential. The network advice led to a successful application in phase two of the Horizon 2020 SME instrument. The technology which improves soil fertility has a positive environmental impact and will, will create more than 16 jobs in the first years alone. Thank you very much indeed. So congr many congratulations again to our second winners and thank you for, t but it's not been easy for you, I know, coming in at the last moment, but thank you very much indeed. Thank you to you all. So our third and final category is New Horizons and by this we mean the best example of positive results for high potential SMEs who have successfully benefited from the network's innovation services. And this will be introduced by video by EuroMP Kaya Kallas. Hi, 
My name is Kaja Gallas and I'm a member of the European Parliament, elected from Estonia. I had the honour of being one of the jury members for this year's Enterprise Europe Network Awards. Unfortunately, I'm not able to participate in the award ceremony in Bratislava with you, but I hope today's event will lay the foundation for many more fruitful discussions on SMEs and their success in Europe. I would like to take the opportunity to thank the Enterprise Europe Network and its partners for making these awards possible. This is a great initiative for maintaining and nurturing the positive spirit towards entrepreneurship in Europe. New Horizons category means moving outside your comfort zone and that means taking risks. We know that zero risk means zero gain, but it also means that you can fail. Therefore, it is my great honour to present you the nominations in Category C, New Horizons, who have taken risks but not failed. The three nominations for the 2016 Enterprise Europe Network Award are SmartCast is a cloud application that gathers data from wind turbines to perform diagnosis for detecting failures. On May 2015, we got the Phase 1 grant from the ESME instrument of the Horizon 2020. Once we got Phase 1, Enterprise Europe Network contacted us for offering mentorship and business coach. With SmartIF, uh, we help them identify two main uh, needs, which target client was their focus and which countries they should enter first. Thanks to our collaboration, we are currently working with large companies in the wind power market industry in Europe, such as Enel, E.ON or Gas Natural. Through our application, in Tailpoint, the retailers can manage their inventory much more efficiently. They can automate uh, certain processes and also manage the procurement and all the orders to the wholesalers. We contacted the Enterprise Europe Network when we were trying to find alternative sources of funding and uh, SME Instrument uh, was one of them. The Enterprise Europe Network actually guided the company into the SME Instrument program, this Champions League of the Innovative Companies in Europe. We have succeeded in phase one and to have received the, the first part of the funding. The next big challenge with Intel is to help them access European markets, also through the SME Instrument phase two proposal. We've started from three co-founders to a company with 27 employees. So I love how I see my company growing. My brother and I invented a technology that allows to make emulsions differently from classical technology. With Emulsar, the company I've created with my brother Christophe, we develop ingredients to produce better healthy food. In 2014, we decided to target the medical food market and we contact the Enterprise Europe Network to help us. We gave them some guidance on how to apply to EU funding, helping them to get the best score. Thanks to the network, we get funding from the SME Instrument part of Horizon 2020 program. Hemulsa now is developing this new product and they can go to a new market and help patients in hospitals. In 2020, we expect to reach 75 million euro revenues and therefore become a European technology leader in the food health industry. And we're going to ask Christian Schreiber to please present these uh, award winners. So, so 
winner is Smarte from Barcelona, Spain, together with its partner Axio. Congratulations! It's taking a bite of the, of the statue right? to see that it's real plastic, but... <laughs> it is. <laughs> so, Jordi. Jordi Cosido, you've seen him. Um, you had business coaching for, through the SMA, SME instrument. So, how did that help and what did it entail? Yeah, that's right. It helps a lot uh, and makes a difference because as uh, the um, girl from the commission said, uh, we take a lot of risk, so the coach helped us to define better business model and value proposition, and that creates difference in our company. Excellent. The girl from the commission, the Euro, the Euro MP. <laughs> okay. But anyway, congratulations. And uh, uh, Sandra Collum from ASIO, um, do you imagine that there are other Yordies out there in your area, are there innovative SMEs who could really, really benefit uh, in your local market? Yes, uh, I, we have a 100, uh, 100 SME instrument beneficiary in Catalonia, and uh, we work uh, uh, to the coaching and company and key account manager, um, and we won a new champions. So there are more out there, like, like your... Is it Smartive or Smartive? It's Smartive, actually. It is. Right, I wasn't sure. So, Christian Schreiber, give us an, an idea from, from the judges panel why this company was, was chosen over the others. Yeah, I mean, this category is about uh, choosing uh, companies which made the most use of these innovative services, and I really think that almost all three would have deserved it, but what actually triggered in the end for your company is, I think, two reasons. First, uh, of course, uh, it's great to see you being active in an area which is environmentally sustainable. Um, second, I think you have demonstrated a very clever way of making the most out of the commission support available because you initially uh, got support under phase one of the SME instrument and then indeed you got the coaching uh, of, uh, from the Enterprise Europe network in order to make sure and help you uh, to get into phase two, which is of course uh, then also entails a major financial benefit which helps you with a company which I think a bit more than 800,000 euros. And uh, thirdly, I think you're a very good example for a startup which wants to scale up um, because, I mean, your technology is scalable and you want to move into other markets. So that's one of the three reasons why we thought that you really deserve this price. Well, thank you very much indeed and congratulations again. So at this point, I'm going to thank our judges very much. You are dismissed because you have done your job and thank you very much again, Stefan, but thank you very much indeed. I'm asking Jordi to stay with us and we're going to ask our other winners, to, our entrepreneur winners, to join us on the stage. And we're just going to try and very, just have a brief discussion, but just to get a sense of what the future holds, really, and whether the partnership with the, the network will continue. So, um, could I ask uh, Peter Langer to come back on stage, please? Um, we have Mark Flettner and Ulrika Ravnikola. So, thank you very much indeed, and congratulations again to you all. Um, I'm going to ask you all really more or less the same question. It's just sort of looking ahead to the, the next couple of years, where you see the future opportunities, whether you imagine you will still be working with the network. And, um, and Mark, perhaps I could start with you from Aquabion. Just to remind everyone, this is a self-cleaning, eco-friendly water treatment system. It does sound amazing. and. Um, where, so how do you see the future? I can see uh, clearly growth and expansion for Aquabion. As uh, you have seen in our video, 
Aquabine is a green and patented product uh, made in Germany. Our simple message is reduce scale and rust in water with Aquabion. 100% without chemicals, 100% without external energy, and 100% maintenance free. We live in a world which is becoming more aware of global warming and pollution. Conventional water softeners using salt, chemicals, and lots of water for the regeneration process in order to treat the water have already been banned in some places around the world. Scientists recently reported that by 2050, the lack of fresh water could severely affect more than 50% of the population. We are a green alternative that has been fighting against what was the accepted chemical solution for decades. Remember, 90% of our body is made up of water. So, really, all of us have a duty to support clean water. I do see great opportunities in a closer cooperation in the future with the network. This will create international growth and expansion for Aqua, uh, Aquabion, surely. Through close cooperation with the largest business network in the world, we can definitely find interesting new international partners. I'm positive that today and here, a new chapter begins and many new things will be possible for Aquabion. Well, thank, thank you, you very much indeed. And of thank course, you. one of your international partners is sitting right by you, um, Ulrika Rabner-Koller of uh, Rabner Green Tech. So you were basically selling this technology to markets you knew were there and you could target. Um, so what about your own company then now and looking ahead? Yes, yeah, so we definitely see a very positive future for us, for our company. So uh, our company was founded uh, more than 50 years ago by my parents. They started with regular construction business. And we entered then environmental technology almost 30 years ago and started 25 years ago to internationally market our own products. But we have seen then um, that we created a sales network, uh, international, and we have seen then uh, that actually we have our customers have special problems and we really try to solve their problems and to be able to solving their problems we need um, other technologies to do so so that's why we started then to look for innovative and especially um, very good technologies uh, to be able to fit to our own products and so we are selling now um, a wide range of products to the same customer types and uh, we definitely want to increase uh, also our markets. Now we are selling um, Aquabion in almost 10 countries in Europe. And uh, we always want to enlarge and step by step we would like to enlarge our uh, territory. But definitely for us it is um, environmental technology, especially the water business and internalization uh, for us is, are the three uh, key topics for the future. Thank you. And Peter Langer from Novihom, um, a soil conditioning technology uh, to improve soil fertility using lignite. And you've, gone, you've scaled up from university to pilot project to manufacturing. Um, I mean, where do you go now and do, will you still be working with the network? Well, our plan for the future is definitely to grow on a global scale. Um, we have uh, uh, to grow on a global scale and to make a contribution to worldwide food supply security in this way. We have a concentrated humus product. And humus, humus is actually the organic content in soil. And it is, uh, other, uh, in addition to water and nutrients, uh, the third most important component in uh, soil that ensures soil fertility and a healthy plant life. In this way, uh, there are many areas in the world, uh, we're especially targeting dry regions, arid regions, uh, regions that are uh, threatened by erosion that lose humus. And uh, those regions, naturally, we start in Europe. We start in the south of Europe where there's intense agriculture, uh, but we're also targeting the Middle East, Africa, 
uh, Australia, certain parts of the United States. Those are regions where our product has a special uh, advantage and can really upgrade these soils in order to ensure uh, good agriculture. So this, is, this global uh, growth is definitely our target, and if we can continue to work with the Enterprise Europe network, uh, that would certainly be uh, very beneficial to us. Um, the other important aspect is that our raw material is lignite, and we are offering with our product an alternative to the uh, power generation potential of lignite. It's typically used in power generation. Uh, there's a lot of carbon dioxide generated and released to the atmosphere. Our product, in contrast, helps the sequestration of CO2 in uh, organic matter in soil, and in this way can compensate for the uh, CO2 that is being released. And we want to work on this uh, aspect uh, more in more detail in the future and are certainly looking for partners here also to work with us in order to show and to demonstrate how we can enhance carbon sequestration in the future. Well, it's very impressive. I mean, it's astounding. You know, you've got sort of global uh, aims now, amazing. Now, you're the casino for Smartiv. Um, this is software, digital platforms to improve wind farm efficiency. But you're already, we saw in the video, you're already working with major power companies. So you've already come so far. And where do you go now? Well, we have a lot of uh, uh, path to go. First, I'm glad to be in this panel because all um, the winners are in some way related with sustainability. So this is a really an important challenge that humanity faces. And us as a smart if we try to contribute a little bit on the change of energy model. So once we change from, uh, from coal and nuclear, big plants, power plants, to more renewable technology, we're facing a lot of challenges regarding to balance, regarding to how to maintain, how to operate such uh, kind of assets and, and power, um, in that case, wind turbines. So we want to scale up our technologies. We are working with uh, big players like Enel, Gas Natural, Eon, as is it said, but we need to go further. We need to introduce uh, the renewables and uh, energy and power and wind power up to the global world. We need to get introduced into every wind farm, and that means a lot of uh, efforts. So the Enterprise Europe Network help us a lot to come up to new these big players, see how we can adapt our product or business model in order to come into these big players and work to challenge this sustainable and make hopefully a better sustainable future. Thank you. And it is impressive, yes, that all four are in the sort of sustainable future world. Um, Ulrika, what's interesting, I, I, and I hadn't realized this, is that you're not only an entrepreneur, but you are the vice president of the Austrian Federal Economic Chamber, and you're president of the European Association of SMEs, Skilled Crafts and Trade, UEAPME, which is difficult to say. But uh, so you've really got a real overview of, of SMEs. And so wh what do you see as the, the real kind of special and unique quality that the network has that can really make a difference? Yeah, SMEs in Europe are actually the backbone of the economy. And we have a, very, um, a, a lot of um, SMEs who are very innovative. And the network really brings also the advantage that for SMEs who have very innovative products to seek other uh, areas in, in, on the international level for sales. And I think we too are the best um, example how it works, that we have on one hand um, very innovative products and on the other hand uh, sales structures. And I think this is quite important, especially for SMEs, because SMEs cannot afford to have themselves a marketing department, sales department, or um, research and development department. So they have to rely on cooperation. And I think this is also for the future very, very important that we um, have the possibility to um, form or, or to, to provide with the network uh, the form of cooperation. And um, I also would like to ask 
also the network partners, please also seek a very close cooperation to the SME organizations in your country because those have really direct contact also to the members, to the SMEs. And I think with this combination, we really have a good future also in Europe. And we need technology and we need innovative and sustainable products. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and Peter, just when you, have, when you were scaling up your business from, from that university lab, what are the main hurdles, really, that you came across? What were the, what were the most difficult parts? Well, when Hume was developed at the university level, it was uh, a very interesting project. Uh, but it uh, got stuck in the initial lab phase. Uh, there was a lab equipment uh, making samples of the material, but it didn't really make it to the market at that time. So when we picked up the project uh, years later, in 2012, uh, we said, well, there are two key questions that we need to answer. One is, um, what is the cost of manufacturing the product? Is it a marketable product that we can actually sell to potential customers? And second, do we have the backing by investors who can uh, give us a few years of security that we can go through this phase and develop that? And uh, so the first uh, thing we targeted was we radically changed the production process as it was initially described in the patent, and we made it into a a feasible uh, production process that could also be scaled, because if you can't scale it up, uh, you got stuck, stuck somewhere. Uh, so we managed that, and then, and then we were able to find investors who believed in us as a team and also in the product. And I think in this combination, we then were able to take the next step and find the next investment for the pilot plant, which is actually the most difficult part when you really need to invest and when you really need money. And at that stage, of course, the uh, uh, SME instrument uh, ward here came, uh, or the, the, the funding came as an additional help in that phase. So that was uh, a very important step. And uh, I think overcoming this hurdle of getting the, the, the first big investor when it really needs capital, that was the most decisive. And step. how long has the whole thing taken? I mean, from back in that lab to, to, to well, now? Well, actually, from the lab, I mean, we purchased the patent at a time the patent had been created before. So we didn't uh, accompany that phase. But from 2012, it took us about one year to cover to accomplish the seed phase of the project, then another half year in order to get the big investor in. And uh, now, three years later, uh, we are going for the world almost four years later. We are ready and, and are operating the plant. So it's not bad. I mean, that's pretty, pretty, pretty impressive, actually. And as Jordi from Smartiv, um, you're a small, innovative SME. So what really, really did you get from your contacts with your network? Very specifically, what really made a difference? What we get from our network is at first context to spread out our solution. Here we got a lot of help from Axio and to move around Europe and also find uh, some partnerships like the Inno Energy uh, Kick uh, community that help us to uh, spread out our solution with a lot of strate strategic partners and they are actually entering into our equity. Furthermore, they provide us um, this uh, guidance, this um, uh, mentorship that refines, redefines, and help us to swift a little bit our business model in order to find the actual solutions to sell our, our products into the massive market because it needs a uh, quick uh, redefinition, a, quite, um, a specific. So it was really useful because it helped from one side to make our business more sustainable, more uh, easy to sell, and from the other, give us the European contacts to reach these key partners. So we are really glad to be in touch with our inter enterprises. Europe Network, Enterprise Europe Network. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you all very much indeed. And once again, congratulations to you all. Thank you.
Have you got everything? Oh. Has it come apart? It's come apart. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so it was real plastic after all. So that's what we need. We need an enterprising SME to make some, some award statuettes that don't fall apart within the first half hour. Now, so that was great to hear some inspiring stories and to really set us off, I think, really, for, for the, the day ahead and, and tomorrow. And leads, I suppose, into the, also the storytelling workshop. Um, we're moving into coffee time now, but um, I just need to tell you a couple, of, a couple of important practical details. The session, What's Next? Debating the future of the network, which uh, I'm not sure which room it says on your program, but it's actually moving to the Orel Stodola room. The Orel Stodola room is the future session. And remember, I said there are only 120 seats available there, so if you could just spend, send one person from your consortium. And another room change is that the session, Taking Integrated Approach to Innovation Management, is here in this auditorium. So that's after coffee, that's happening here. So you're going to have a very busy rest of the afternoon. There is a, a welcome cocktail at the end of the day, hosted by the Slovak Ministry of Economy. Just a reminder, I know this is sort of getting ahead of ourselves, but the shuttle buses, I think, anyway, there are some screens around, but there are going to be shuttle buses every 15 minutes going back to the hotels uh, from 7.15 this evening until 9.15. And there are some slides coming up behind me, but there are two different routes depending on which hotel you're in, so you have to look at that. But um, the, the, there are s details of this on the slides outside. So really, all there is left to do is to congratulate our winners once again and to wish you all a very successful conference. Thank you. What? <laughs>